Sally Winterfell, and she of the ridiculous portmanteau of the last name, spurred on by both her parents, Linda Winterwood and Arnold Falcon, being the only survivors of extended family lineages, and both insisting that their last name not be the one to disappear, was upset. <laughs> she was upset for a number of reasons, and was so upset, in fact, that she had made a list written in her loopy, italicized handwriting on a series of off-brand blue post-it notes, or, according to their packaging, adhesive stationery cards. Of everything she was upset about. One, Walmart will not call me back about the thingy. <laughs> Two, I don't remember where I put the thingy. <laughs> Three, it won't work without the thingy. Four, George won't help me look for the thingy. Five, the Gazette messed the page up. Six, I am out of post-its and I still can't find the thingy. The thingy was a small piece of oddly shaped plastic used for setting up Shelley's Walmart chocolate fondue fountain. And without the thingy, the fountain would not run properly. This was an issue because Shelley had pledged to the church that she would provide the chocolate fondue fountain and, in fact, that it would be the centerpiece of the entire Beaufort Church of Christ potluck and garage sale. And the fountain was the very last one of the Walmart. Without the thingy, Shelly couldn't show her face in front of Nikki or Sue or Irene for months, but the thingy was nowhere to be found. Additionally, Shelly was responsible for the church's advertising and had spent hours rearranging those little silhouette people on the paper and getting the fonts all correct and posting it in all the most visible places around town and even figuring out how to email a Word document to the Gazette and, after going through all this trouble, had discovered the ad printed not on page 3 next to the going song about, about town, but on page 6 next to the obituaries, with poor Helen Winks' face staring right at it. <laughs> An angry call to the editor had assured Shelley that no offense was intended by the placement. It was simply a mix-up with her ad, which she had saved as potluck church sale dot dot, and the usual ad for the nearby Honda dealership, which was titled Paul's Lucky Car Sale dot dot. But still, Shelley thought, it was completely unprofessional. Ever since they hired that inbred little Lord Fauntleroy, Chuck Smalls, heir to the Smalls estate, everything over there had just gone entirely to pot. This whole town was going to pot, it seemed, <laughs> perpetually on the verge of collapsing from its hard-earned perch at the top of South Carolinian neighborhoods to a crime-filled bog without a single decent charter school. <laughs> and where had she put the darn thing? The sole checkout line at the Port Royale Grocery Mart had six carts in it. The first belonged to Helen White, an elderly lady who hobbled to the grocery store every afternoon to buy bread, eggs, milk, and nothing else. It was rumored she hadn't eaten a vegetable since 1986. <laughs> Next was the Pearson family, Joan and Brad, and their children, June, and Brock, and Jamie, and Brad Jr., who always looked ripped straight from their yearly Christmas card, sent out to virtually every acquaintance they had ever made, which amounted to over 100 people. They needed two carts to hold all their food, which glimmered with freshness. Nobody liked them, of course. <laughs> Next was the overweight old African-American lady, June, whose last name nobody knew, and who lived in a little bungalow directly adjacent to the grocery store, which many corporations had attempted to buy for ludicrous amounts of money, but June held steadfast to the land, even as everything gradually gentrified itself around her. She was buying two gallons of water, 
an oversized bag of Lay's salt and vinegar potato chips, and three rolls of fly paper. Then was George Winterfeld and Nee Feldman Jr. with his flabby body and thinning black hair, poking over his cart filled to the brim with red solo cups for the church party, clutching a scrap of paper his busy body wife had written for him. Plastic cups, red, garlic. The store was out of garlic. <laughs> and there, last in line, he stood, Emerald Woods, questioning whether to buy his customary quarter pound of ham and baguette, or whether to ditch the inevitable 20 minute wait when George couldn't find his wallet out of loaded to Shelly that morning so she could run one of her silly errands as usual, whether to stuff the baguette back into its stand and slyly drop the ham into one of the piercing parts, as they would notice one way or the other, and hightail it out of there, go catch a movie in the shopping center on Robert Small's Parkway, down by the beat-up old sleep inn. But Emerald wasn't one to ditch responsibilities or procedures, no matter how laid up and pointless. So he stayed in line for 25 minutes, walked home, and enjoyed a ham and egg sandwich and a hot cup of coffee, three sugars, no cream. Shelly Winterfeldman was upset. She was upset about many things, and as she clasped the steering wheel of her 2004 white Honda Odyssey and maneuvered its bulky body into the tight spaces of the Walmart parking lot, she recited in her head all the things she was upset about. Her upsetness manifested itself in her walk, which was quick and clipped, and in the murmurs coming from her mouth, and in her furrowed brow, and the disapproving glances continually emanating from her eyes. She opened the Walmart's door and was greeted with bustling consumerism bursting at her from all sides, and enveloping her in smiling faces on the shirts of frowning ones. <laughs> Excuse me, hello? The man turned to look at her with weary eyes as if to say, whatever your problem is, I've heard it from thousands of others, waves of housewives with the same exact hopes, dreams, and worries as you. Or maybe just, I can't wait until I can get home and watch football on one single screen instead of the thousands behind me. <laughs> Hello, um, I was looking for a manager I could speak to, maybe? The man held up a finger and groaned, just a sec. Soon the man in a business suit and a sewn-on smile emerged from the wall of televisions and handed Shelly a form with, How can we help you? Written on the top in highlighter yellow. Hello. Uh, I bought a chocolate fondue fountain here a few days ago, and I lost a little thingy that goes with it. A little plastic thingy. Yes, ma'am, but well, we sold out of the fountains just a few days ago, so I'm afraid I can't do anything about that. Sorry. Anything else I can help you with today? Uh, no, I'm afraid not. Do you know where I might get a replacement, uh, thingy? No, ma'am, I'm afraid I do not. Anything else I can help you with today? You're sure you don't have any idea? No, ma'am, anything else I can help you with today? Uh, no, that's all, I suppose. Thank you, ma'am, I hope you've enjoyed shopping at Walmart. Have a nice day. The man turned around briskly and marched back through the TV wall. Shelby left. It hadn't been a good day for Shelby, and it was only going to get worse. Continued in Houston. Thank you.